Behind me, you are taking a look at one of the most rugged, challenging, and brutal 23-mile loops we have ever seen. Hello, everybody. I'm Jack Rapella. Welcome to Parker, Arizona. It is the best in the desert season finale. It's also the final race for the exciting Maxis Triple Crown. When it's all said and done, more than $600,000 will be paid out to racers and hundreds of thousands more in contingency. We've got so much on the line. Points are razor close. We've got a lot to talk about. Let's get this party started. Adrenaline and unpredictability. A rousing and thrilling championship battle has reached a fever pitch and a spectacular season finale starts now. Welcome to the Blue Water Challenge here in Parker, Arizona. Jack Cropella and Grant Langston here with you. Grant, we have made it through the season. It is time to crown champions. Yeah, this is going to be really exciting. One last opportunity for everyone to show what they've got. Like you said, championships on the line and a very tough course here. And remember, this is round three of the Maxis Triple Crown. Minuscule margins in many of these categories that we will get you updated on. This course best described as short course on steroids. It will deteriorate heavily. You see down there, windy. We need to put windy in extra large font and bold because it is downright blustery and that will be a factor here today. Let's give you a look at this course. Truly punishing, truly taxing, a lot of different obstacles that will keep drivers on their toes. Grant, we know you come to Parker, attrition will be a major factor. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, one of the shorter courses, but that means it's going to have more laps, more vehicles going around and getting rougher. Very tough, very intense. And a lot of areas that could be tough on these vehicles, this track will be rough. And this is a two-day event. You finish with that gut punch, the Parker Python. It is dreaded for sure. Well, let's take you to day number one, a two-day event here. We begin in the 6100 category. Cal Jurgensen looking to win a first ever title for him, but he's got to hold off Ray Griffith and Troy Messer, who are also right there, separated by only one point. And this action was hot and heavy from the get-go. Yeah, you see the drivers just getting settled in trying to avoid some of that dust. Staying out of those big holes, Brad Lavelle. With the championships coming down to the wire, a day one strong performance is so important. We determine our winner by combined elapsed time. We also have the 1,000 category out there competing where Connor McMullen was brilliant once again. Four cylinders, Ford Ecotech motors with unlimited suspension. Let's give you a look at day one results. Cal Jurgensen, Gets the early advantage, but followed very closely by Ray Griffith. Connor McMullen took sixth overall. He won the 1,000 category. And as you can see, this field is stacked heading into the final championship race. Yeah, that you, doesn't get any closer than that one point separating your top three. Remember, they do have a drop event, which means you can throw away your worst result from the season. But as they stand right now, it is that tight for the top. And Kyle Jurgensen, the talented 25-year-old, is looking for a first-ever title. Can he do it? Personally, I feel good. Sean feels good, the co-driver. The truck, this Gen 3 Brenthal, is, uh, is ready to win. Um, we had a flawless day one. N low temps, uh, no flats. I mean, we really couldn't for ask for a better day one. We are going into day one with a estimated 40-second cushion on Griffith. We also have a throwaway race, and Laughlin is both Griffith's and I's throwaway race, which gives us another 16-point cushion. So it, with that throwaway race, he can win, and we can finish eighth. Um, are we going to do that? Probably not. We're going to try to win today. Just, just I feel like once you drive to lose, you make mistakes. So we're just going to drive like we always drive, and we'll probably do just fine. Well, here we go. It's time to get this party started. Grant, you have been there, done that. Take me inside the mind of a racer. It's Championship Sunday. Everything is on the line. Huge money and bragging rights at stake. What are these guys feeling right now? 
Well, I think obviously a lot of uh, tension, a lot of pressure. There's a lot on the line. And uh, But I like what Carl had to say. Uh, he's coming in with the attitude, we're not coming in on the defense, we're on the offense, we're going to go out. Uh, but he knows he doesn't have to risk everything, so I think he's in a good position right now. You saw all the equipment Ray Griffith would need to fix a flat tire or anything else. He's hoping he doesn't have to deal with that today. With such a short course here, a pit stop would be disastrous. The start is so important, we're off and running. Look for vision to be a real factor as well. Dustin Grabowski was able to deal with that well on day number one, but this track looks to be even more trying, even more difficult on day number two. Yeah, well, with the, the, the winds we have, it'll dry this course out pretty quickly, but I think Brad Lovell will like this course as well. It's short, something that he's used to from short course racing. Andrew Myers and Travis, two individuals to watch here in the 6100 category. New rules this year, 40 inch tires in this category and bigger motors. Well, let's check in with the star of the 1000 class, Connor McMullen. The ultimate goal for this weekend um, obviously would be to win both days and, you know, keep honestly a great pace and keep the car alive. And honestly, if winning this race and potentially being up there for Triple Crown, um, that would be for me, myself as a driver in my racing career would be even even back-to-back -back points championship for myself in class 10 would be amazing regardless um, but to win this race this weekend um, that's obviously the ultimate goal and to be up with the top 6100 guys is absolutely amazing so our goal obviously is to win this weekend and you know have a super strong finish for me and my team and you know get this thing on top of the box Connor is such a perfectionist. It seems like he wins just about everything he enters. Follow me on this one, Grant. This would be like a race around motocross on a 250, being a threat to win the overall out there against 450s. Yeah, that was really impressive. That onboard shot was just beautiful, watching him go through those opening sequence of corners. He's tough, definitely a rising star for sure. Well, speaking of tough, we're gonna watch this race course change every single lap. Congratulations to Best in the Desert. This is another record breaker with 336 entries. The bad news is that track can't take much more punishment. Those holes are getting deep. Yeah, you can see, look at that suspension working. Carl Jorgensen truck looking really strong right now. Well balanced. Oh, and look at this. We got a drag race. We'll see some tight racing here in the season finale. Championships at stake. The triple crown at stake. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The Best in the Desert series is brought to you by Maxxis, your way to adventure. Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. Building a country is hard work. That's why Ford builds the Super Duty. To help build the roads, the buildings, and everything else that needs to get built. There are trucks. And then there's the new Ford Super Duty. The most capable heavy duty pickup truck ever built. Rugged radios, work, race, play. Hey Steve, where are you at? Experience clear communications through headsets or helmet kits. I'm up on the hill to your right. Oh, there you are. Talk vehicle to vehicle. Keep radio contact going, copy. Talk to passengers. Copy that, I gotcha. And stream your favorite music. Complete communications for UTVs, base camp, toy haulers, or off-road vehicles. Rugged radios, the authority in communications. The race to the championship is on as we welcome you back to the Blue Water Desert Challenge. Jack Rapella, Grant Langston here with you. Kyle Jurgensen 
digging hard, charging hard. He knows if he wins, he not only wins the championship, but also the coveted Max's Triple Crown. We're at mile marker 5.4, and boy, Jurgensen looks flawless so far. Yeah, the truck definitely looks well balanced. They look comfortable. Um, obviously, clear track is a great benefit at the moment. You can see how dusty it's getting. There's been quite a nasty breeze. I wouldn't even go with breeze, quite a wind. And I'm sure it's affecting these drivers somewhat. And with the lapse time being such a factor, sometimes the scenarios can be a little cloudy and murky here in desert racing. But Ray knows one thing. He has to pass Jurgensen. He has to beat Kyle for an opportunity to win the championship. Absolutely. And behind them, Dustin Grabowski. A truck looks, uh, looks very nice right now. But you can see these guys are working constantly. You can see that wheel, that focus. Um, it's, not, it's not a matter of just putting your foot down and going in a straight line. You're constantly just finessing, working, and trying to avoid that big hole you saw just caught that there just a little bit. Remember, it can also damage the truck and potentially cause a rollover. This course is downright excruciating and demanding, but that doesn't mean some of these racers just aren't standing on the gas and going for it. Brad Lavelle, talk to us about it. Well, I think the key out here is just push, you know, no prisoners. Uh, we're used to doing Baja racing, but out here, you, you can't be conservative at all. It's just full throttle all the time. It's not if you slow down for the whoop, it's if you slow down enough, you don't die. The bravery and courage is just off the charts. I don't know how these guys do it, Grant. <laughs> I don't know if the, how much is bravery and how much is it. They might just have a screw loose because I'll tell you what, most of these drivers are not afraid of speed whatsoever and the consequences, but you can't be. The unforeseen is always a part of Parker, but it makes it so exciting. We want to thank Parker for welcoming Best in the Desert with open arms. Also want to thank the Colorado River Indian Tribe. We know that the pandemic year has caused a lot of changes, a lot of alterations. This is where we began the season, and this is where we're going to finish the season. Also, what a great job this year by Scott Harden, the folks brothers, and everybody at Best in the Desert to push on and get racing in. It hasn't been easy, but they've been able to do it, and they've broken records at just about every race. Yeah, great to see the, the sport well and alive. Connor is just on the gas. Look at him. This youngster has no fear. Wow, he is just, well, he's got that foot to the floor right now. And man, we saw the other truck earlier, Travis, some of these braking bumps and then coming out of the corners, they're doubling them. This is, uh, this reminds me of my motocross days. Yeah, it sure does. And I'll tell you, Connor, you better watch out when he steps up to the trophy truck category. He's going to be a threat for a long, long time. What a young, rising talent. Look at visibility. How in the world do you deal with the dust? Yeah, when you get these shots a little closer to the ground, you can see a lot of haze out there. Definitely going to affect them. Vision is critical. Some drivers using tear off, some using some uh, a roller film system. Yeah, I've heard a few of these drivers really wanted to concentrate on a setup that would get to the finish. Who will make it to the finish? We'll find out when we return. Rugged radios. Work, race, play. Hey, Steve, where are you at? Experience clear communications through headsets or helmet kits. I'm up on the hill to your right. Oh, there you are. Talk vehicle to vehicle. Keep radio contact going. Copy. Talk to passengers. Copy that, I got gotcha. you. And stream your favorite music. Complete communications for UTVs, base camp, toy haulers, or off-road vehicles. Rugged Radios, the authority in communications. There's torque. Then there's 1,050 pound-feet of available best-in-class torque. There's towing. Then there's up to 37,000 pounds of available best-in-class towing. There's backing up a trailer. Then there's backing up with available class exclusive pro trailer backup assist. In other words, there are trucks. And then there's the new Ford Super Duty, the most capable heavy duty pickup truck ever built.
championship battles are coming down the stretch. These LS3 525 cubic inch motors are humming and vision is deteriorating. I don't know how they can see. Welcome back everybody to the Blue Water Desert Challenge. Ray Griffith trying to find a way around Kyle Jurgensen, but right now he's got to hold off Dustin Grabowski who's putting a lot of pressure on him. Yeah, he sure is, and I, I don't think he's going to wait very long because of vision issues. And, oh, a little contact oh. there. Oh, Griffith offline. Maybe just uh, giving that position to Dustin. Dustin raced short course for nine years. He's showing off some of those skills right now. Young man from Rancho Cucamonga, California. He's flying. Well, as they say, Rubin is racing, and a uh, little bit of contact there, but uh, Carl Jurgensen on lap four, mile marker 10.8, still looking cool, calm and collected out front, knows what's on the line. And this track has just deteriorated over the last couple of days. And he cannot let off too much because not exactly the biggest of leads. As we get the zoomed out shot, that is pretty tight. So arduous, so demanding is this course. And Kyle really had a great attitude. He told me, he said, look, I'm not taking anything for granted. I realize we could have a mechanical, we could have a flat tire coming down the home stretch. Yeah, you had a quick glimpse of Andrew Myers having a solid drive in that fourth position. Grant, I'm being told if Jurgensen can hold his position, he will also win the Maxis Triple Crown. This year, it's the largest payout in the history of the sport. Best in the Desert has done a great job along with Maxis, putting up a ton of bonus money for these racers. And they need it too. This is not exactly a cheap sport by any means. On board with Justin Blower with our Optum batteries on board shot here. And the wind is just relentless, tremendously breezy. It's typically at a desert race, wind will help you because it will help clear things out. A few racers told me the wind is so severe, so strong right now, it's making things worse. We can't see anything. Yeah, it's just kicking up dust, so it's actually everywhere. Um, we had monsoonal type weather to start this event. So this time around, let's just throw in some high winds. Versatility is key. You got to be able to handle any conditions. And look at Connor McMillan. He's doing just that, working his way up through the 6100 field in his 1000 class buggy. Oh, it's really impressive. This youngster's got so much talent, no fear, all the things you need to be a successful driver. And really, don't look at oh. him. Just gives it the old chrome bumper right there. And uh, nice little etiquette from the drivers. Remember that name. He's a rising star. He dominated Laughlin this year. The GetTheT.com buggy. And here comes Kyle Jurgensen. Is it time to get the champagne out? Is the dream realized? Kyle Jurgensen, first to the finish line. He wins his first career championship and the Max's Triple Crown. You so saw Dustin really close behind. Be interesting to see how all these elapsed times turn out. Waiting for our next driver. There's Ray Griffith. Don't know if that's going to be enough. I think, like you said, Jack, just a little short on this one. It's been an outstanding and magnificent season for Griffith. Nothing to hang his head about for sure. Terry Householder coming in now. Still a lot of vehicles left to finish. Look at how rugged this course is. It's official. Let's send it down to our newly crowned champion and Max's triple crown winner, a euphoric Kyle Jurgensen. Well, um, I can't thank our team enough. Uh, Brenthal Industries builds great trucks, uh, great people. Um, the prep was flawless, and we just kind of cruised around. Day one, we were a lot faster. Um, you know, we had to kind of get our cushion for day two. Day two, we got Ray off the start. We knew he had to physically make a pass. He was there all day. He wasn't messing around. And it looks like Grabowski was also on a mission, but we probably realistically lost the day and we knew that, but we won the weekend and we won the championship. So you just gotta not let it get to your head when you're racing. You look back, you see Grabowski one turn back, and, and you have to just go, hey, there's a bigger, there's a, something bigger happening here. Not don't don't try to race them. Just get this truck to the finish. It's, it's awesome to to actually make a whole season come together. And uh, I'm glad I was on Team Brenthal. They without them, there's no way I could have done this. And uh, you know we're, we're just we're we're excited. It's awesome. 
The young driver showing the poise of a veteran. Congratulations. Dustin Grabowski grabs a second place for the weekend. Let's send it down to him. We had a good day. Pretty much just played follow the leader until the last lap when we finally got close enough to Ray to make a move. And we kind of threw her in there and she stuck. So, you know, we're stoked to be second um, on the road. Hopefully first on time today. So, you know, we're just stoked on our day. I just got to thank all the people who come out here to help me. Um, CBR Performance, NGK, Mode Tool, um, Pro-Am, Jail Herps Motorsports, BFG Tires. Super stoked. Dustin told me the key would be staying smooth, and he did just that. Well, smooth is fast, and he was fast the way he ended this season off. Great drive for him. Ray Griffith, a respectable finish for him. Didn't quite get what he wanted, but a runner up in points and third on the weekend. We were in Jurgensen's desk all the way there till about uh, Grabowski got me just a couple miles back from the finish here. Uh, we came into this racing for the championship and uh, we actually ran the same engine all season long and it just started to lay down on the, it, it started losing power halfway through today and we, we were still hanging out. We were honestly just sending it as hard as we could and trying to double everything we could to keep momentum because it started laying down in the last lap, it really started laying down. It's good. Hopefully uh, finishing second for the season against him and uh, the show that we've been putting on, hopefully it helps us out and get some sponsors and a little more budget next year. We're going to come at it with everything we need. This was kind of just getting our feet wet in this class. I, I think we learned a lot, so we'll be full board next year. A team should be very proud. It's been very emotional for them. They've overcome the loss of their longtime prep man, Kelly Meyer, and the loss of Ray's father-in-law, the legend Jeff Quinn. You know they're smiling down on this weekend. And let's check in with our thousand winner. I think you know who it is. Um, honestly, I, I couldn't do it without, you know, my amazing team and sponsors and everybody that helps me out um, just to get me here and to be able to have a car that is 100% reliable, Alumacraft race cars for making an amazing car, back-to-back um, -back points champion in this class. It's been an absolute ride, and it's it's been amazing. And I couldn't do it without, obviously, my dad, Kevin McMullen Racing, for prepping my car and doing whatever it takes to make sure this thing's always on top of the box. Um, get the T.com, H and Live Foil, Method Race Wheels, Tensor Tire, Fox Shocks, uh, Redline Performance, CBR Radiators, Phoenix Commercial Electric, United Construction Group, everybody that comes out to support me and my family and my team and just to be out here and be on top of the box and a back-to-back -back champion is just absolutely amazing, so thank you. What a special season. Kyle Jurgensen gets it done by a slim margin. That was our theme all year, but congratulations. He's the champion. He wins the Triple Crown. What a competitive season it was. And anybody who finishes this race deserves a pat on the back. Oh, absolutely. It's uh, definitely one of the toughest uh, events you'll see out there in desert racing. But great job as well. Ray Griffith pushing all the way to the end. And uh, Grabowski for great drive to finish off the season. Final margin, 28 and 6,100, 46 points in 1,000. It has us looking ahead at what should be a very exciting 2021. Kyle Jurgensen gets the Triple Crown. Ray Griffith and Connor McMullen follow closely in that. Well, speaking of championships, the Unlimited Monsters are ready to duke it out. A thousand horsepower, ready to be unleashed. Don't go anywhere. We've got Trick Truck coming up next. Building a country is hard work. That's why Ford builds the Super Duty. To help build the roads, the buildings, and everything else that needs to get built. There are trucks. And then there's the new Ford Super Duty. The most capable heavy duty pickup truck ever built.
Rugged Radios. Work, race, play. Hey, Steve, where you at? Experience clear communications through headsets or helmet kits. I'm up on the hill to your right. Oh, there you are. Talk vehicle to vehicle. Keep radio contact going. Copy. Talk to passengers. Copy that, I got you. And stream your favorite music. Complete communications for UTVs, base camp, toy haulers, or off-road vehicles. Rugged Radios, the authority in communications. It's time to crown champions in the unlimited trophy truck category and 1500 buggy class as we welcome you back to the Blue Water Desert Challenge. Jack Rapella and Grant Langston here with you, but let's take you back to day one where a pair of unforeseen, unfortunate incidents have flipped both points battles upside down. First, the multi-time champion, Jason Voss, suffers one of the most devastating, brutal crashes we have ever seen. The good news here is Jason is on the road to recovery. Go on board, take a look at this. It's hard to watch. Yeah, just a high-speed crash that you saw. I had a bit of wheel into it. Looks like the truck just got a little unsettled, and for such a small mistake, it led to such a big crash. Glad that he's doing okay. Boss dominated all year. That shows you just how fickle desert racing can be. It now opens up the championship to Harley Lettner, Tracy Graff, or Steve Oligas. How about over in the buggy category? Sam Barry, your points leader, he blew an engine. That now clears the road for Michael Fry or Brandon Bailey. And look at all the wild cards we have. All the spoilers, Jake Johnson, several individuals out here looking to win this season ending race. Yeah, very disappointing for Sam Barry. He's been driving so good all season long. Those mechanical issues can surface at any time. A rollover can happen anytime on this grueling and demanding course. On the trick tracks, Justin Lofton looked strong. Taking the win on day one, Holly Lettner also had a solid season and a great run on day one here. He began by qualifying number one here at Parker. They want their first ever championship along with Kevin Thompson. There's a two-time Baja 1000 winner, Brad Wilson. He shined in day number one, looking to seal the deal here. Yeah, you can see the sun, some of these shots with the sun setting. Still a little bit of uh, vision issues. Jake Johnson, our Vegas Torino winner. Keep an eye on Brandon Bailey out of Team Stronghold Motorsports. He's got an opportunity to win a championship this weekend. I told you, Grant, take the points coming in and flip them upside down. That's what day one did to this. Justin Lofton gets the win. He'll be looking to finish that up here in day number two, and we've got so much to sort out. Let's get it on. As you can see, Harley Lettner, he's got some sweaty palms. He drove yesterday. He's letting Kevin Thompson drive today. Tracy Graff has an opportunity to win the championship. And the veteran, Steve Oligas, out of Las Vegas, out of Team Ford, who's been at this since 1984, has an opportunity at the title. We're off and running. Time to get this party started. Yeah, the title absolutely blown wide open. Justin Lofton and Kevin Thompson track looks nice fresh it is had a little bit of work done in this opening section they've thrown some water down really fun section for these guys but of course you want to come out of this side by side in front yeah they had to do something it was just getting so beat up so tumultuous talked to Thompson moments ago he said this would be the greatest moment of his career if he could somehow win a championship Tracy Graff echoed that None of these racers thought they would have an opportunity. Jason Voss won the first race of the year by 25 minutes. That's how dominant he was. Now suddenly, a slew of others have an opportunity to win a title. Well, that's one thing about motorsport racing. Things can turn in a hurry, and that's why we line up each and every weekend. Voss, like you said, so strong all season, but has really just opened the door for several drivers now to get that goal of being a champion. Jesse Jones and Josh Daniel, two of the 4x4 trucks out there blasting off the line. Great rivalry we've got shaping up between the two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive trucks. Yeah, really cool to see these opening sections, seeing how the different lines, the different uh, truck setups work, and then these berms, the drivers really able to get in on them. But you can see already the rut, rut's starting to develop, so it kind of forces them into that main line, which will obviously get rougher and rougher. Here comes Adam Householder and the legendary Desert Assassin, a Baja 1000 winner, the one and only Cameron Steele looking for a win today. Lovely onboard shot. You can see the roost just coming off as they 
especially when they bounce off these uh, berm turns here. You can see how much roost it shoots out there. Whoa, that was uh, getting all over the place. And this is lap one. What's gonna happen when we get to lap number four? Justin Lofton, a boffo performance for him. A former ARCA champion. This guy's an all-around talent. I'm a big fan of the ARCA series. If you can get it done there, you can get it done just about anywhere. Lofton's proving that. Well, we could also say if you can get it done in Laughlin, I think you're a pretty well-rounded driver as well to do it in other disciplines. But as you said, Lofton, just a great talent. You saw the truck digging in a couple times, bottoming out. See the drivers using those little microfiber towels, bouncing them around. We talked about vision, and this is just one way to help get that dust off, eliminate the glare from the sun. That'll give you a workout right there. And unfortunately for the fast Canadian, Tracy Graff, I'm hearing they are struggling with transmission woes. His championship dream could be over right here. Something doesn't sound quite right. Yeah, that'll be very unfortunate. You know, just when you find out you're in a position to potentially win a title, you now have a mechanical. So if Graf drops out, it'll be between Thompson and Oligus. We've got a lot to sort out. Rugged radios, work, race, play. Hey Steve, where are you at? Experience clear communications through headsets or helmet kits. I'm up on the hill to your right. Oh, there you are. Talk vehicle to vehicle. Keep radio contact going, copy. Talk to passengers. Copy that, I got you. And stream your favorite music. Complete communications for UTVs, base camp, toy haulers, or off-road vehicles. Rugged radios, the authority in communications. There's torque. Then there's 1,050 pound-feet of available best-in-class torque. There's towing. Then there's up to 37,000 pounds of available best-in-class towing. There's backing up a trailer. Then there's backing up with available class-exclusive Pro Trailer Backup Assist. In other words, there are trucks. And then there's the new Ford Super Duty, the most capable heavy-duty pickup truck ever built. Dust, sand washes, whoops, and more places to crash than I can count. The Blue Water Desert Challenge rolls on. Jack Rappella and Grant Langston here with you. Justin Lofton continues to lead. We're closing in on crowning champions. Yeah, Lofton looking strong, and you gotta imagine with Voss out, these are two of the strongest drivers. We are on lap two at mile marker 7.9, so almost at the three-quarter point of this race, Steely resolve for Justin Loft, and remember he was right behind Jason Voss when Voss suffered that devastating crash. Lofton said he dedicates the entire weekend to Jason. And oh no, Tracy Graff, we suspected transmission problems. He is off the track, his championship dreams end now. Oh, just another one of the drivers in that points battle to be eliminated from this championship. So one by one, just disappearing. And this really opens the door Four drivers like Kevin Thompson and Josh Daniel having a great drive closing that gap. It's down to Thompson and Oligus competing for the championship. What a great season it's been for Team Harley, Lettner and Thompson competing Ooh. with, wow, look at the dust out there, unbelievable. Lettner with the Joe Gibbs power plant on board trying to hold off Josh Daniel. You're gonna need horsepower because here he comes. Wow, what a great move there. As you can see, Thompson gets a, a view of that one. So Josh Daniel filling in for Justin Matney, uh, having a great drive, doing that team very proud. These 1,000 horsepower trucks are boundless. Remember, no restrictions. As one racer told me, your only limitations are your wallet. <laughs> that is a pretty good way to put it, because uh, a lot of these drivers do not have any fear. So that's one thing they've eliminated. And I got to say, hats off to these co-drivers. You also have to be very trusting in your driver to be sitting there going at these sort of speeds. Yeah, as we saw with Voss, the, the co-driver is in as much peril as the driver. You're in this thing together. You roll over, you're not going to have a great day. It's not going to be fun. 
And the driver also relies on the co-driver to tell them where the rocks are, where the ruts are. It's a difficult job. It's a thankless job. I don't know that I would want it, Grant. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure, too. It takes a special individual, that's for sure. Big shout out to all the co-drivers out there that make this happen. Adam Householder, really hooking up well. Looks like he's got the suspension dialed in. Yeah, you can see just nicely squatted in the rear, the front, a little on the lighter side. And now we have a look, Brad Wilson. He is still leading in a buggy class He's with uh, Sam Berry out of this one. He's a wild card this weekend. He didn't compete in the point series this year, but they wanted to come to this race. They love it. And they could end up playing a big factor because Michael Fry and Brandon Bailey now are fighting tooth and nail for the championship. Both of those are also still alive in the Maxis Triple Crown Series. We've still got a long way to go. And let us not forget about Jake Johnson, a former Vegas Dorino winner. He's tough. Yeah, Johnson solidly in that second place. A little bit of time to make up if he wants to challenge Wilson for that lead, but uh, looking good at the moment. On board now with the Mav TV Lucas Oil backed ride of Brandon Bailey. He's got an opportunity for a championship. We spoke to him about that. Yeah, we feel great. We had a good run yesterday and, uh, you know, just trying to keep it going today. The track's going to be brutal. It's going to be dusty. The wind's helping out a little bit, so, you know, we'll see how it goes. And, but, yeah, just try to, to have a clean run and not make mistakes and just go for it. A very successful third-generation team that starts with the patriarch Scott Bailey. They've represented Lucas Oil so well. And look at this. They came in only trailing Sam Barry by three points. We know Barry's out. They have an opportunity to win a title, but so does this man, Mike Fry. And this year in the point series, they're allowing racers one drop. That could throw a bit of a monkey wrench into this situation. Uh, it'll help some people, especially if they had a, a DNF or were unable to make an event. Uh, might help them a lot. Kit Stokes on that VP on board. You can see a little bit of the dust. You've heard a couple of drivers say it can help, it can hurt. Too windy makes it bad, but just enough to move it off of the course can help just a little bit. And this wind is relentless. I stepped out moments ago. Now I know what it feels like to be in a sand blaster. I don't know how they're doing it. Justin Lofton we're hearing with a flat tire. Oh no, Lofton's had such bad luck in Parker. I thought he was able to get off the schneid earlier this year, but it looks like those problems will continue. A championship battle is heating up and reaching a fever pitch. Don't go anywhere. We'll sort it out when we come back. The Best in the Desert series is brought to you by Ford, Built Ford Top, Polaris Razor, Fuel Your Passion, and by KNN, Superior Airflow, Superior Performance. Rugged radios. Work, race, play. Hey, Steve, where are you at? Experience clear communications through headsets or helmet kits. I'm up on the hill to your right. Oh, there you are. Talk vehicle to vehicle. Keep radio contact going. Copy. Talk to passengers. Copy that, I got you. And stream your favorite music. Complete communications for UTVs, base camp, toy haulers, or off-road vehicles. Rugged radios. The authority in communications. Building a country is hard work. That's why Ford builds the Super Duty. To help build the roads, the buildings, and everything else that needs to get built. There are trucks. And then there's the new Ford Super Duty. The most capable heavy duty pickup truck ever built. Razor close, points battles are about to be decided. Welcome back to the Blue Water Desert Challenge. We've got a new leader, Josh Daniel, who's filling in for Justin Matney on the RPM truck, is really moving. 
yeah, he's just been uh, keeping his nose clean, staying out of the drama. As we see Josh Daniel, the leader, lap four, mile marker 1.5. So he knows that finish line is in sight now, but still a fair amount of racing to be done. And the championship spotlight remains on Kevin Thompson and Steve Oligas. And this could come down to just a couple turns out here. Yeah, on board, Jason Jones, the co-driver Austin, trying to uh, give that international signal, just keep on trucking. Keep her straight. Jones, a former Baja 1000 winner. His son, Austin, talented Dakar racer. Really moving out there. Great performance for them this weekend. Yeah, you could just really get an appreciation for the speed through that section as it blousted past our helicopter. These guys really moving. Well, good news for Justin Lofton. He's back moving. An opportunity for him to possibly win the weekend. Remember, we decide winners by total elapsed time, day one plus day two. It's not like motocross where you take positions. So Lofton's still very much alive here. And oh no, Grant, I'm hearing that Kevin Thompson is potentially having transmission issues. This could be disastrous for their championship hopes. We knew attrition would be a factor. Yeah, this would be devastating. We've seen already some crashes, some mechanicals. And now for Thompson, is this gonna end the race? Look how close this championship battle is with Jason Voss out, the door is wide open. Yeah, especially for Steve Oligas now, the veteran. He's an eight time champion, but has not won since 2007. There he is. Look at the effort. Look at the physical exertion behind the wheel. That's what it takes to get around Parker. Earlier, we talked to Steve Oligas about his opportunity to win a championship and just how difficult this race is. First of all, my, what's going through my mind is I'm worried about Jason Voss. He's a good friend of mine, and uh, I just talked to his wife, and he's doing really good. So that's my first concern, that he heals up and gets better quickly, because uh, uh, obviously the championship was uh, it was all his. He had it made. So the unfortunate deal yesterday, what's going through my mind now is I still got Graf and, and uh, Harley Lettner and Concrete uh, right there with us, so it's still going to be a battle. And uh, I got stuck uh, high-centered yesterday, couldn't see in the dust, and was stuck for about 14 minutes on the GPS deal. So you know what? I feel the pressure but I also look at it this way is you got it you can only do what you can do out there and these guys are all great drivers and there's a lot of stuff that could happen so uh, this race always unfolds kind of different ways and I just uh, yeah am, am I stressed yes but on that same I've done, been here before so you know now we just gotta we gotta just close the deal now Jason Voss a fierce competitor but also all of these guys friends how tough is that Grant when your friend your competitor gets injured the way Jason did well, I think anytime you see it happen to such a good driver like that, it really reminds you the reality is it can happen to anyone. And I think drivers all feel like they're in that same position. And like you said, uh, when these guys are in the pits, a lot of them are friends. They hang out, they help each other out. It's like one big family. And again, we join the racing community and sending our thoughts and prayers to Jason Voss. Really good to hear he's on the road to recovery. Kit Stokes finishing up what has been a great weekend for him. Yeah, nicely in the top 10 as we go back on board with Brad Wilson, still out front. These guys, even their visors look nice and clean. You can tell uh, not eating a lot of dust. Suits are clean, visors are clean. Buggy looks intact and they are trucking along. Phenomenal effort for them. That's the advantage of being out front. Clean air will continue to monitor our championship battle as this course just becomes more unpredictable, more punishing. Again, I go back to what Cameron Steele told me. He said, look, I'll be surprised if half the field finishes. That's how big these holes are getting. Well, we've seen a lot of uh, top drivers uh, departing from the event already, which has really changed the championship. Eric Harden there looking strong, also having a solid drive. John Bowers from Norco, California, looking to end this season on a high note. Everybody wants a strong finish here to give you that momentum heading into 2021. Well, as you alluded to, the biggest payout in desert racing. So for these guys, money on the line, points on the line, potential sponsorship. And it looks like Oligas is, is he coming to a stop? Oh no, I think he might have hit something. This could be disastrous. Oh, Oligas, he stays on the gas. Look at the rocks up in his face. I, I think he hit one of those giant rocks. Is he out? This is going to throw a huge monkey wrench into the championship battle. We'll be back to sort it out.
Then there's 1,050 pound-feet of available best-in-class torque. There's towing. Then there's up to 37,000 pounds of available best-in-class towing. There's backing up a trailer. Then there's backing up with available class-exclusive Pro Trailer Backup Assist. In other words, there are trucks. And then there's the new Ford Super Duty, the most capable heavy-duty pickup truck ever built. Rugged radios. Work, race, play. Hey, Steve, where you at? Experience clear communications through headsets or helmet kits. I'm up on the hill to your right. Oh, there you are. Talk vehicle to vehicle. Keep radio contact going. Copy. Talk to passengers. Copy that, I got you. And stream your favorite music. Complete communications for UTVs, base camp, toy haulers, or off-road vehicles. Rugged radios. The authority in communications. The Best in the Desert series is brought to you by Maxis, your way to adventure. Geico, saving people money on more than just car insurance. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. We're racing down the home stretch of what has been a magnificent best in the desert season. So much to sort out. Let's get you updated. It's Daniel Jones Lofton. We're hearing Lofton's in great shape for the overall this weekend. As far as the championship battle goes, Oligus a lap down now. The way they stand, the way they sit, Lettner and Thompson are in position to win this title if they can finish. Yeah, it's all coming down to this. As we see Jesse Jones, great drive. Second vehicle to cross the finish line. Don't think He'll end up in that second spot, but still fantastic end to this race for him. Josh Daniel first across the line. Great way to end the 2020 campaign for him. Here comes Lofton. As we said, we got our calculators out due to his dominant performance in day one. He's in good shape for the overall. Yeah, it didn't have to be first across the line, but with the lap's time, he will win it. Steve Oligas, unfortunately for him, a lap down due to the mechanical that ended his championship hope, but glad to see him cross the line at least. And here's our update on Kevin Thompson, Harley Lettner, an opportunity to make a dream come true, taking the checkered flag. They will win their first championship. Unbelievable. Yeah, great weekend for them. Fourth across the line, but enough for the title. Brad Wilson on board with him. He has just been flawless. The championship battle still razor close between Bailey and Fry. We'll keep a close watch on that one. Speaking of champions, let's send it down to our newly crowned champion, Kevin Thompson. And I know Harley Lettner's got to be around. This is a, it's been a heck of a year. We, we've had a great year. We had a couple DNFs that, that uh, gear issues. That's why I had to take it easy today. But uh, again, it, um, we've had a great year and uh, next year's going to be better. It's getting faster. Just the whole team, Harley, Harley, come here, get in here. It's our Harley and I, he, you know, he's, it's our, it's both of ours. He preps it, Catch it's me. awesome. <laughs> so we got it, that's all that matters. So the whole team, it's, it's uh, unbelievable. Uh, it means everything. I mean, uh, obviously we do everything to win races. Winning races, consistency gets you points championships. So coming into the, uh, this weekend, the way the, Plates folded out. It was uh, play it smart and get the number one plate. Getting championships is huge. Having number one, just uh, the team. We worked so hard to make everything work, and then you know the stuff that happened this year had a couple ups and downs. You know, obviously the world, but we as a team came together and uh, stayed strong and we prevailed, and it paid off and uh, we went our way. This is. Uh, the greatest thing that's ever happened to me in my career. Uh, since I was 15 years old, the ultimate goal of my life was to be in a trophy truck and then to be number one in a trophy truck. And uh, thanks to Kevin and his team, I'm able to fulfill that dream with him. And uh, it just feels amazing. It's, it's the best thing you can do in this sport. So we're stoked. I mean, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> It's always touching to see a dream come true. Congratulations to that duo on a phenomenal season. Craig Curtis coming into a finish here. We're keeping a close watch on the Buggy Championship, and we're hearing right now by a razor close margin, Michael Fry is ahead. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's go down and talk to our Trick Truck overall winner this weekend. It has been awarded to Justin Lofton. That's uh, that's so awesome. We've been. You know, we kind of were in a slump this year, and uh, uh, Fury here 
just it was giving us trouble since day one. Now it has over 700 miles without a prep on it. Uh, that's you know thanks to these guys, great partners, FK Rod Ends, uh, Yokohama Tire, Method Race Wheels, uh, Fox Factory, Multicam, uh, Jimco Racing, Danzio, uh, Albin's in this truck, and uh, just everyone that puts in all their hard work back at the shop to make it uh, make it happen. We beat the absolute crap out of these things, and they just keep going. So, uh, pretty stoked about that. So. Watch out for Lofton in 2021. Here comes Eric Harden to the line. And it's official, Fry is our 2020 buggy champion. Well, uh, early on, we knew we just needed a finish. And so we kind of uh, are hoping some of our competitors uh, held uh, Brandon up a little bit. That'll help us. He needs a second or better by our math. Uh, well, it was very stressful this particular, you know, getting down to the last race of the year. Typically, if you got enough points or you don't have enough, you don't worry about it, right? But this a strategy comes into this for us. Uh, you know, Brandon's a, a great competitor. He's super fast. For us, it's all about um, finishing races and being consistent. And hopefully it works out for us. You know, driving as fast as you can doesn't always work out. Grant, we knew we'd need to get our calculators out to figure this thing out, but it's starting to materialize. That sure is. But uh, Justin Lofton actually had slightly bigger gap than uh, maybe I anticipated there. Little five minute lead. He was solid all weekend as we look just outside the top 10. Some great drives there, Brandon Bailey in the mix. And Kevin Thompson makes a dream come true, wins the championship. Voss ends up finishing fifth. Michael Fry by three points, edges out Team Stronghold and Brandon Bailey. Look for them to be back with a vengeance next year. And how about Kevin Thompson solidifying? And it makes a dream come true, wins the championship. Well, as we told you, 336 entries made this a record breaker in all different categories. There was action in so many different classes. Yeah, one of the uh, markets that's really growing, as we see Austin, he was the winner in the turbo class. The UTV market is really getting strong. This is a little bit of the grassroots sort of racing to get in desert racing. So this class just continues to grow and it'll be future champions and trick tracks that come out of this. It's a great stepping stone, and we're seeing a lot of motorcycle racers jump over to the UTV world. With age comes a cage. Grant, you would look good in one of these. <laughs> I would think so. Phil looked good as he gets the championship in his Can-Am, that bright blue vehicle. Yeah, no, I would enjoy this a lot as well. Uh, I've had a chance to be in some UTVs. Any form of motor racing, I think it's just unbelievably enjoyable. <laughs> They're a ton of fun. If this looks enjoyable, come out and give it a try. Make sure you check out BITD.com for all the information on the 2021 campaign. Jason Murray had a very impressive performance with his Can-Am as well. As we see in the T900, Sierra Romo, great drive there as well. These UTVs turbocharged. How about that? If they weren't fast enough from the factory, try putting a turbo on them and going out through the unforgiving desert. You can imagine as we have a look at the results here, all the different classes and categories. A lot of options out here if you want to get into racing. Yeah, there really is, and there was so much excitement. I am just so happy that we were able to get in 2020. Again, big congratulations to Best in the Desert. They picked up tons of momentum, broke records, provided racers with a very safe and enjoyable place to compete in 2020, and that's all we could ask for. Hayden Hintz gets it done in the motorcycle category, and it was rolling for sure. Certainly hope you've enjoyed it. Grant, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely, thank you so much. I really enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to 2021. More money in the series means more investment. I think we're gonna see great racing. It was an unpredictable wild season. We loved every single minute of it. We'll see you in 2021.